Hey guys, welcome back to Honesty's channel. So this is part two of 36 weeks. So along with being 36 weeks, your baby's about the size of a large head of lettuce, but um, may also be like a large bag of chips, like Bugler's. Still, it's about over 18 inches, give or take. Um, 18.7 inches long and weighing in about 5.8 pounds this week, so almost 6 pounds. The baby development for 36 weeks also is like blood flow. Baby's getting ready to see the world. And um, by now their blood circulation is fully up and running. Digestion is one system in the baby's development that needs more help, through, though. Digestion. Um, since the baby hasn't had any milk yet, they won't be able to drink until after they're born. It will take a little while for their stomach to get completely up to speed. Shedding with the downy hair, the baby's um, body is coming off so that the vernix casosa, the cheesy varnish that will be protecting their skin, they're shedding that and they will have this baby soft skin soft as a baby's bottom. Baby should be in the head down position, hanging like a bat, in the right position to give birth, um, unless baby is breech. So what happens when your baby drops? Around now, the baby is going to drop from around your rib cage to the closer to your pelvis, as prep for making their entrance into the world. Um, it's an exciting change called dropping, engaging, or lightening. It may be happening within the range of 36 to 38 weeks or even later. Now this can be one of the signs that labor is approaching. It doesn't necessarily mean that's intimate and it can still be a couple weeks until you go into active labor. Though for some women, baby drops right before she goes into labor, particularly not if it's her first baby. So sometimes it will be obvious if your baby's dropped, even so dramatic as um, people might even comment. Or other times, moms barely even notice. So a few ways you can tell is that you're breathing easier because the baby is sitting lower on your uterus. There will probably be less pressure on your diaphragm. You may have to pee more often because less pressure on your diaphragm is going to mean more pressure on your bladder. Could have less heartburn. If you experienced heartburn during pregnancy, you'll be happy to know that once baby drops, your heartburn should ease up since the uterus will be, won't be pressing on your stomach quite as much, though my heartburn hasn't eased up. I'm still having it like every day. And then you may also start to waddle since your baby's now hanging on your pelvic area. You may notice you're walking a little differently, slower, more like a pelv um, penguin walk as the hips spread a bit to accommodate for the baby. And you may experience twinges of pelvic pain and more pressure in that region. Pregnancy symptoms at 36 weeks. You may also feel like pelvic aches and pains down there since the baby's drop. You may start feeling like more in your pelvis. Um, the technical term would be like pelvic girdle pain as the ligaments loosen and baby puts more pressure on your pelvis. Many pregnant moms get really uncomfortable. So if you've had an access to a pool or any like sort of water, you can try swimming or lounging to relieve some of this pressure. And swimming is a great like exercise during pregnancy. All the exercise that I've been doing is like walking, hiking, and swimming. I went and since I've been pregnant during this entire summer, I've just been swimming as much as possible. Um, change in stride, the baby's descent also creates like a telltale pregnancy waddle, wider pelvis meaning a wider stance, and you may gait dramatically at 36 weeks. It's time to embrace the inner penguin. Uh, if you may have vaginal discharge, you may not. So just keep an eye out um, on your underwear. If you see any discharge or like blood or watery discharge, it's time to call the doctor. Uh, the water could actually be the amniotic fluid if it's not mucus. If it has like any blood tinge, it could be the mucus plug. 
I don't know. I haven't seen blood in like nine, ten months. So if I did see any tinge of like pink or red, I would call my doctor immediately or go into the hospital. <laughs> Trouble sleeping. A good night's sleep and late pregnancy can be hard to come by. Because your belly is so big and you're uncomfortable, you're dealing with heartburn and leg cramps, nasal congestion, I mean, all of that, seriously. And you keep having to get up to urinate, go pee. So, like, I'm not getting any good sleep at night whatsoever. The only sleep that I can sleep without waking up with heartburn or nausea is during the day. So, like, try to take as many naps as possible, for sure, is, like, what I would recommend. Um, but if you do get sleep at night, I mean, more power to you. Pregnancy hormones and what will change. So, for the past eight months, almost every ache, pain, and symptom that you've had could be chalked up to pregnancy hormones. So, now you're heading into the home stretch. So, what's next? Well, the good news is after birth. Some pregnancy symptoms go away almost immediately. Things like swelling, pregnancy-induced carpal tunnel. The bad news is your hormones will change yet again when baby arrives, and they'll be pretty haywire up for the next six to eight months, or sorry, six to eight weeks, weeks after delivery, or even longer if you're breastfeeding. Because you're getting the progesterone, will drop immediately, and your estrogen will spike, causing lots of fun new symptoms like fatigue, hair loss, anxiety, baby blues, and in some women, postpartum depression. Um, prolactin is the hormone responsible for the breast milk production, can slow metabolism, and also cause moodiness and fatigue too. So all of this is important now. Just don't freak out. And... Um, just understand, like, what is happening, and it is all completely natural. So, um, the top tip for 36 weeks pregnant is try not to stress about getting a nanny or daycare. Half of um, parents say that it took them more than four months to feel comfortable with their childcare. But nearly 70% of them ultimately found the best possible child care for the, their family. So that's pretty good odds. And yeah, if you have any like trustworthy friends or family members, that's where you're going to probably feel most comfortable or if, with your partner. But um, to new time moms, I completely understand like you just wanting to keep baby in your arms and in your care. I mean, for as long as possible. I was, I took my maternity leave with our daughter and I was out of work for five months. I wanted to wait until she was six months old to go back to work, but I went back to work full time after five months. Um, and then I had my mother, her grandmother babysit her after. It wasn't until she was about a year old that I actually put her into a child care loving learning center. Um, preschool child care, daycare, and that was really hard at first, but um, she enjoyed it. She got to make friends, and like as she got older and out of like the diaper stage and more into the running around stage, she was able to make even more friends and play on the playground and everything, so that was good, um, and it prepped her. So now with our second child. I have been lucky enough to have my husband be working full time and I've had, um, I've been able not to work and just stay at home with our daughter. So it has been a really nice time being able to spend as much time with her as possible before baby number two comes. And um, then my husband is going to be taking his paternity leave, family leave, to be able to help me at least for a month or so. Uh, with the cooking, cleaning, taking care of our daughter and our son, driving and doing most of everything because I'm not supposed to be driving or bending down or overexerting myself after surgery. 
So he is going to be there and um, helping a lot. So week 36 pregnancy checklist, just to catch up, mark the calendar starting at 36 weeks. Your doctor will want to see you every week if he hasn't already. Um, add the finishing touches to the nursery. Finish packing those hospital bags if you haven't already. And um, think about child care, but don't stress out over it. And make sure, you know, like, you might want to wait until after a baby's born to, like, know how you feel, um, how comfortable that's going to make you feel. So you might want to spend as much time with your newborn as possible. Um, but it's totally up to you if you are taking paternity leave, maternity leave, family leave. Family leave might extend a little longer. So just talk to your, um, your work and your family and just play it by ear or like by feel so that's pretty much what we have for 36 weeks uh, if you missed my 36 weeks video number one go back through honesty's channel my pregnancy vlog and find the first video so um, just to catch up I am 36 weeks. We are having our son be born with a scheduled C-section in 20 days because today is officially October 1st. We are doing the countdown and um, it is the countdown of 20 days unless I go into labor early. So I'm going to be making another video about like what are the signs if you are going into early labor um, in case any women are wanting to know just a heads up um, or a reminder what to do if you feel like you're going to labor early uh, if it's false contractions like Braxton Hicks or if you think it's real contractions um, everyone thinks I'm going to go into labor early with our son so we'll see either he's going to be born in 20 days or sooner so we are doing the countdown. But happy October, everyone. Happy babies and parents. Thanks for tuning in to Honesty's channel, and I will see you all soon.